Hey yo, thanks for tuning in to Celeb Sauce. It's the backup channel, backing Celeb up and bringing you all the breaking news. The other day, Cassidy did an interview. And during the interview, he started talking about R. Kelly. And he was like, if you guys out there are going to be upset with R. Kelly, y'all need to be fair. Because R. Kelly wasn't the only dude out there trying to pick up on young girls. Cassidy also said that if he was the judge and cut off every grimy, guilty dude in the industry, there wouldn't be nobody left to work with. Check out what Cassidy had to say. I don't got no problem with niggas being mad at R. Kelly. If that's how y'all feel and y'all feel like what he did actually makes you mad at heart, cool. But be mad at heart at anybody that's in that bag. Like, you know what I'm saying? Because right. there's a bunch of niggas. In Yo, my bag. nigga, not even just famous niggas like R. Kelly, just in my neighborhood alone that I grew up in, bro. Yeah. Yo, my Ooh. nigga, every time all the middle school girls was getting picked up by old heads. Old heads. Like all the we bad middle school. Every girl that was bad in middle school was getting picked up by some older That's nigga, bro. Straight up. Like in every hood. Like why <laughs> niggas acting like they don't know niggas like this? And that's just regular niggas. Not to mention these industry niggas is worse, bro. Like these niggas is like crazy. So now I can't do records with you. Might as well, I can't do no records then. <laughs> Like, damn, I can't do, right? I can't do no records. Now you, the radio people that played it, you got a problem with them. You got a problem with the video, nigga. The station that my video ever got played on, you got a problem with them. You got a problem with every fucking body then because all of these niggas is guilty as shit. Yeah. So I ain't like here to like point the finger at R. Kelly and these niggas like, they ain't my job, man. I just like respect the nigga music. Yeah. Okay, so here's the problem. It is your job as a grown man to have a problem with other grown men who are looking at children who are going to school because there's no such thing as a middle school baddie. Middle school children are like 11 to like 14 years old. You're not supposed to be looking at those kids like they're prospects. So now that we understand that there shouldn't be a such thing as a middle school baddie, let's discuss the fact that what he said is true. Because when I was like 12, 13, 14 years old, there was never a shortage of like 20, 30, 40, 50 year old dusty dudes waiting outside to try to kick it to me. I mean, they're standing outside trying to buy me ice cream. They're trying to buy me like a quarter water. I mean, it was ridiculous. And I'm sure that most of the women out there can relate to what I'm saying. But what I'm really saying is that this ish is a problem. So all of these dusty, low budget, dingy, developmentally arrested dudes who were standing outside of middle schools trying to find themselves a little girlfriend need to all be locked up. Listen, let me know what you think about Cassidy saying that we need to be fair because R. Kelly isn't the only one out there. Now, check it out. The other day, Ebony K. Williams was talking to Ayala Van Zant, And during the conversation, Ayala asked Ebony if she would ever date a bus driver. And Ebony said the only way she would ever date a bus driver is if he owned the bus. Well, needless to say, Ebony's comments sparked a whole lot of debate online. And now, DJ Envy is jumping into the mix because he believes that Ebony K. Williams was trying to ish on working class people. Check out what DJ Envy had to say. These I feel like you're changing the goalposts, right? What people were upset about was what you said and everything that you said could absolutely positively be true. People were upset that they felt like that you were putting down the average person, quote unquote, average job and the person that was working the average job that that they're they're what they do is not as good as what you do. That, that's, that's a projection. That, that's, no, that, Andy, no, that's a projection. That's because what, what, let, you let, know me what I, I'll let you speak. Go ahead, go ahead, talk, go ahead, yeah. So so when you start talking about all this and, and I read the comments just like you did, because I wanted to prepare myself when you came up here to, to understand what people were mad about yeah. and what, understand what people were upset about. So when you're talking about all this, this brother, this and, and the black man, this and the white supremacy this and this that and the other that's all to the side of how you felt about that quote unquote average job right mm -hmm. and, and, and I'll be honest with you right and one of the comments that I said and, and, and maybe I'm not sure right the guy was like he was like you talk about all this about lifting a brother up and lifting, li lifting this up and white supremacy and, and what you do for our people and then the first thing the brother said was but your fiance was white and I'm sitting there like how, how do you talk about how much you uplifting and how much you're going for black people but that's not necessarily what you're even looking for well first of all Paging Dr. Umar I, damn well, no, that, that's well, the, no let's, let's address and, and it. And and let's, wrong, not, wrong. Let's, not skip, let's not skip a beat. Mm -hmm. So, 
I would love to know how you envy know what I'm looking for because we never know. had the conversation. I don't so, right, know. But, but I'm, you asking, just I'm telling you it. what people are saying on comments what I've right. read and I'm and, and I'm talking for them. I'm not a bus driver. I am, I'm oh, speaking I for, the, for the average person out there because I feel for them because the bus drivers and the average person are what keeps these lights on here on the Breakfast Club. Right. They keep me they keep me booked and shows. Nobody they keep is saying, okay, first of all, this is not about you booking I'm shows. Asking. I'm, I'm this just is telling about, you how I feel. So when you shit on the people that no, first ride of all, with me, Evie, you're dead ass wrong for framing it as me shitting on them. You don't think it was shitting on them? Listen, if Ebony K. Williams doesn't want to date a bus driver, then that is her preference and that is her prerogative and that's her business. Like, who really cares who Ebony K. Williams wants to date? And I'm sure that there's a whole bunch of bus drivers out there who would never want to date Ebony K. Williams. Now, with that being said, I have a few friends that are married to bus drivers and they're very, very happy. You know why? Because the men that they're married to are very, very good men. And I was always taught as a kid, you marry a person because of who they are as a person, not because of their occupation. Why? Because when that recession hits, anybody can get a pink slip. And then what kind of partner are you left with? Listen, when Ebony K. Williams said that she would never date a bus driver unless he owned a bus, do you think that she was ishing on working class people? And also, is DJ Envy right for saying, how are you so pro-black but you're dating white? Let me know in the comments. And while you're down there leaving a comment, be sure to like and subscribe to the channel. Now, check this out. The other day, a 30-year-old schizophrenic black man named Jordan Neely was choked to death on a New York City subway train. Neely was a Michael Jackson impersonator who frequented the subways, but recently fell upon hard time and found himself being homeless. Well, apparently, the other day Neely entered the train and began yelling, quote, I don't have food, I don't have drink, I don't mind going to jail and getting life in prison, I'm ready to die, end quote. Now, due to Neely's outburst in behavior, a 24-year-old former Marine from Long Island named Daniel Penny decided to take it upon himself to put Neely in a chokehold and restrain him on the ground. Despite being told by bystanders to let go of Neely, Penny continued to choke Neely for like 15 minutes while two other passengers helped to hold Neely down on the ground. As a matter of fact, during this whole ordeal which was caught on videotape, you can hear somebody in the background yelling at Penny and telling him to get off Neely by saying, quote, if you suffocate him, that's it. You don't want to catch a murder charge, end quote. Now, even though mad people were yelling at the Marine to let go of the chokehold, he refused to do it. And a few hours later, Neely was pronounced dead at a nearby hospital. Now, according to the medical examiner's report, Neely died of compression to his neck and the death was ruled a homicide. But despite this fact, the police questioned Penny, but then they let him go. So now people in New York are up in arms and they are protesting because they want this dude arrested. Listen, anybody who's ever ridden on a New York City subway knows that crazy is just part of the ride. So all you have to do is keep your head down, mind your business, and keep doing what you're doing. And if you get that uncomfortable, you just get off at the next stop and get in a different car. So, I'm saying this to say that if during his psychological breakdown, Neely did not put his hands on Penny, then Penny had no business putting his hands on Neely, and he should be charged with murder. Listen, let me know what you think about this Marine choking this black dude to death in the New York City subway system. Do you think that it was murder? Let me know in the comments. Now, check it out. The other day, Takashi69 jumped on Instagram to vent about what he perceives to be the unfair bias in hip-hop against Spanish rappers. In the post, Takashi said, quote, I seen a lot of people saying, yo, 6 9 went from English to Spanish. This is one. I owe my record label a Spanish album that they paid me $3 million for in 2020. Let's talk about two. You know how many Spanish ninjas is born and raised in Brooklyn, Manhattan, the Bronx, Queens, Staten Island, the whole New York City. What y'all trying to say? Spanish ninjas can't eat? So when you Spanish, you can only make reggaeton? You can only make Spanish music? It's our culture too, ninja. F is you talking about? Just think about it. Name one Spanish rapper other than me and Shorty that could enter the top 10 on Billboard. Name them. I can't even name Spanish rappers. Y'all don't let ninjas eat. Y'all just mad because I could enter a whole different demographic in the Spanish market. I dominated English and now I'm going to dominate Spanish. End quote. Look, let me know what you think about 6 9 saying that there's a bias against Spanish rappers and that we try to stop them from eating. Let me know in the comments. 
And hey, yo, thanks for tuning in to Celeb Source, your source for celebrity news. Be sure to like and subscribe to the channel. Peace.